Uh, CMS is an experiment in particle physics. And particle physics is a modern name for centuries-old effort to understand the fundamental laws of nature. Now, CMS itself is a, a very complex, perhaps uh, the most complex scientific instrument ever built. It's filled with uh, uh, advanced technologies, some technologies which uh, didn't even exist uh, when we started uh, building the experiment uh, some 20 years ago. Now, what it can be likened to is a digital camera. Uh, it has about 100 million pixels, because that's the number of uh, electronic channels it has. And uh, it's a camera which weighs uh, something like uh, 15,000 tons, so it's no ordinary camera. Uh, and it takes about 40 million pictures a second. Uh, this is the number of times the proton, the bunches of protons uh, collide at uh, design performance. Uh, now, we need to look at each of these uh, uh, pictures. Uh, that is a computing challenge in its own right, because the size of the picture is about one megabyte, just like a digital camera photo. But it's uh, something else in this, in this camera. It is taking pictures of events that were occurring one thousandth of a nanosecond after the Big Bang. So it goes back in time. Uh, so it, we're reproducing a subset of uh, collisions that were occurring at that time. And what we'd like to find out is what was the content uh, of the universe at that time. Uh, the hope is that uh, it contained things like Higgs boson, uh, which uh, gives mass to objects. So uh, without uh, mass is what gives us substance, if you want. Uh, it could have other types of particles, uh, a new symmetry called supersymmetry, which predicts uh, a whole set of particles, the lightest of which could be responsible for dark matter. They might have been uh, particles which uh, have telltale signs of extra dimensions. So that's the sort of thing that we'll be looking at. So it's a digital camera that takes a very large number of photos of a time one thousandth of a nanosecond after the Big Bang. Uh, we started taking data in uh, November, and uh, of course we'd taken some uh, uh, other data earlier, which indicated the experiment was performing very well. But uh, it's only when the uh, uh, you, when you get collisions and the particles come from the uh, uh, the center of the experiment fanning outwards that you can tell that the experiment is working well. And in fact, uh, we uh, uh, took data and we looked at many many distributions, uh, which tell us uh, whether the objects uh, or the detectors are working with. Uh, high efficiency, close to 100% that we expect. And the space and time resolutions, if you like, uh, are uh, what we expected. Uh, and indeed, uh, that turned out to be the case. So it's a very, very encouraging start. And the performance is what we uh, expected when we designed the experiment uh, some time ago. So CMS is a gigantic experiment. But at the heart of it, there's what we call a, a tracker, which is a, made it completely of silicon, silicon detectors. So this is about. 10 to 15 layers of, of detectors which follow the trajectories of the charged particles that emerge from the collisions. So this is the key element for this particular paper, for the first paper from CMS, because it measures the distributions of all the charged particles coming out of the collisions. And this is the first thing we want to measure to verify that the experiment's working correctly and to reproduce data that have been seen in previous experiments and then extend those measurements to higher energy. So that's basically what's going on at the moment. And of course, the challenge was to produce these results quickly, to analyze them reliably, which has been done remarkably well. You know, in a, in a, in a period of, a, of literally a few weeks, we've managed to get this first paper to the level of submitting it to a journal for publication. Uh, we know that the many complex uh, parts of the experiment are working very well. Uh, the next thing we've got to do is to uh, see if we can uh, measure known physics. Uh, so this is a physics uh, that merited, in fact, Nobel Prizes about 25 years ago. Particles like the W bosons or Z bosons and top quarks. Uh, the standard model predicts uh, the rates and the characteristics of these types of events, known physics. Uh, so what we have to do first is to uh, measure uh, the rates and the characteristics of these events and uh, check and verify that uh, we can actually reproduce what is expected. Uh, then, or in parallel, we'll be looking at something uh, which is not expected, uh, signs of new physics. Uh, that we can only establish if we have established that the known physics is being uh, reproduced correctly. Uh, for example, uh, uh, sometimes uh, you see some uh, uh, events uh, uh, at a rate which is uh, uh, higher than what is expected. But if you don't know what is expected, you can't uh, claim that you've seen something new. So that's the next step. Uh, and uh, by the end of this year, uh, we hope to be exploring new territory, uh, territory beyond what we've explored uh, in previous accelerators. So they're quite exciting times ahead of us.